Have you ever poured hours of effort crafting new features for an app, a new visual design for a web page? I just launched a new app. Only to have it launch with users and they totally are unenthusiastic and it completely lands flat. I hate it! We think our ideas will work just as we imagine them and be just as successful as we predict. So what do we do? We actually A-B test by creating two versions of an experience and see how that actually lands with a smaller subset of users before we expand it to all of the users of an app or a web page or anything else. So that way we're not risking all of the money of a company or all of the goodwill from those customers on a test before we're reasonably confident it can be adopted for that whole site and do just as well for everyone. Some examples you'll hear about A-B testing that are even beyond like an app. Tim Ferriss is the example that's often used for his book, The 4-Hour Work Week, and testing different titles by using Google AdWords and just using different book titles to see how many people clicked one versus the other. Another example often used is Derek from Veritasium testing YouTube video thumbnail options of a effect called the Magnuson effect of a basketball. And there's two versions. One had a more scientific name and a static image of a basketball. And in another version, there's this sort of anticipatory motion that you want to see what happens to the basketball as it goes over the waterfall. And that massively increased clicks by over 50% by having that more emotional and anticipatory feel to the thumbnail. Another example is the yoga app Alamoves has a flexibility course that you can take that is pretty intense. And my hypothesis, if I were to test something there, was to do one thumbnail with just experts that look very in shape, very flexible, very bendy, and then one that also includes a professor which has a striking beard but that does not look very flexible. And to see if that allows a general viewer to think they may be more likely to be successful in that class and buy it. So we'll have to run the experiment and see. To prioritize what to test, and you'll get ideas from everywhere, all over the place first. And there's a lot of processes out there. There's Pi, there's Ice, there's PXL. But what they do is try to come up with a consistent set of criteria that let you know that those items that you want to test first might be the most impactful to the organization that you can get started on right now and use your limited resources to make an impact quickly. Statistical significance. So if you skipped stats class for that day, that means in this case, in A-B testing, we're referring to the likelihood that the difference in performance between version A and version B is not due to a random chance, but it's a true effect. It helps in confidently concluding whether the observed differences are real and reliable. Now you don't always want to A-B test. There are some scenarios where you don't necessarily want to. You need to have enough units, mostly users, in order for the statistics to work out. Start experimenting when you're in the tens of thousands of users. You'll be only be able to detect large effects. And then once you get to 200,000 users, then the magic starts happening. There are also a ton of A-B testing watchouts. You want to make sure that metric is something that is easy to move, but super important. It needs to be a metric that actually matters. Also, you want to make sure you're choosing the right segments, not just the one that's going to work for you. So if the significance is just enough, that's also a little bit of a red flag. You want to make sure they are statistically significant and not just barely over the line. Overall, we're gonna see a lot of different things like multivariate testing, and as AI comes together and shows us how to test almost infinity things at once, it's important to stay grounded really in this basic concept of which version works more than another.